In today's episode, I'll share with you how to properly block sand your repair area, how to prep out a panel for paint, and how to use glazing putty. So let's dig in and get started. Well, previously we went ahead and repaired a couple dents in this hood. We used some body filler, we block sanded it flat, and then we went ahead and put two coats of 2K urethane primer over it. Now we need to prepare this primer for paint and the rest of this hood. Now this primer will sand very easy, but the first step we need to do to, in order to make sure we're gonna get the best repair possible is to block this primer straight. In order to do that, we're gonna apply a guide coat to this. And this guide coat is simply a powder, a black powder that we're gonna put over the primer surface. And this is gonna give us a guide to when our texture is removed, when our panel is straight, it's gonna show us any low areas. It's gonna give us the guidance to know when this primer is ready to be painted. In this situation, this hood has a contour or a curve to it, slopes down. So we're gonna use this flexible block here with some 320 grit sandpaper. So let's go ahead and block this. We'll start by, we're not gonna push really hard on this. We're just gonna let it form to the shape of the repair and then we're gonna block in a cross hatch or X pattern. We're gonna block in different directions. You'll see me do that. And this will give us the best opportunity to get this panel as straight as possible before we paint. You can see how the texture is starting to be removed. We can now identify the texture. We can identify a little bit of a low here, a little bit of a low here. There's a little low here, but we can continue blocking this until those lows go away, or if we were to break through the primer into bare metal or body filler. So let's just continue blocking this. Now you can see this is flattened out here. We have a little bit of texture still here with a low area. So we'll just continue blocking because we have not blocked through this primer. So we have more material that we can use to straighten this panel. Okay, let's blow this off and take a good look at it. Now, one thing I'm doing is I'm feeling over this with the palm of my hand, holding my hand flat and running over it quickly. And you'll feel any dips or any high or low areas when you do that. And I can tell there's a little bit of a high here. So I'm gonna block that just a little bit more. Now it's not showing up in the guide coat. So a guide coat is not perfect. It's gonna give you a guide, but you always wanna feel over it to make sure it's straight before you move on to the next step. So I can feel a high, a little high ridge right here. So I'm gonna block down a little bit to that. So I'm focusing on this high area that I'm feeling, holding the block flat. I'm not pushing super real hard. I'm just getting a little bit of pressure on this and see if we can get this a little bit straighter. So you can see we're starting to break through, so we're gonna stop. If you look close here, you can see the discoloration of a darkness right here. That is either bare metal or it's this uh, factory primer that we primered over a little bit. It's We're blocking down to it. We're starting to go through the primer that we applied. So we're gonna need to do something a little bit different there. We might need to apply a little bit of more, a little bit more primer, or this might be a high area. And what I'm feeling is there's a low area here and there's a little bit of a high area here. So we may need to tap this down just a little bit. And I'll show you how we do that. In order to tap that high down without denting it or damaging this area, and I just wanna gradually flatten that out just a little bit so it flows more with the panel, we're gonna use a paint stick and I'm gonna lay it on that high area where I know that high area is, and we're just gonna tap it down a little bit. It doesn't take much. Thank you. 
and that is good. That took care of it. Feels much better. A little bit more. Much better. The rest of this feels beautiful and it's ready to go. So now let's move over to this section, see what we have when we start blocking this. You can see our high and low areas start to develop here. So if we look up here, you can see that this is a low area here. We've got guide code in here. A little bit of a low, a little bit of a low, a little bit of a low here and here. And there's a little bit of texture. You can see because the texture is not getting removed. That's because our block has not reached that surface area yet. We need to block down to it to get it straight. Walking in different directions. So this could mean that this area is high with filler and this area is just a low area and we need to block down this high area down to the low area. But we don't know quite yet until we finish blocking it. If we start to break through in this center section here, then we know that this is a high area, but it's starting to block out. You can see this low area is going away because I'm blocking down to it. And I can continue blocking as long as I'm not breaking through this primer. Right here. You can see that on camera. Right there's a low area. Now, right here we can see a little dark area here. So we're starting to break through the primer here. So that means we may not be able to get this low out without a little bit more primer. But we'll see. And we'll see how bad it is. So I'm going to feel over it. And this feels very straight. And yes, I do feel a little bit of a high area here, a little bit below here, here. I'm gonna try and tap this down. Now this spreads out the blow of the hammer, so you're not creating any dents. You can also use a steel spoon for this, but for little lows, like for little high areas like this, I like to use a paint stick, it gives a little bit. block this. So this area here I'm going to prepare for a little filler. We're going to put a thin coat right over it just to level it out a little bit. We're going to use some polyester glazing putty. This is a finishing putty to remove any waves or imperfections in your repair. That'll just be a thin coat of filler to level this out and then we'll reprime this area. In order to do that, we need to prepare this area. We're putting the filler over with 180 grit sandpaper. So I'm gonna sand this with 180, get it ready for some filler or some glazing putty. Okay, now we're gonna mix up a little glazing putty. This is the palette we're using. Um, this is really nice for mixing up filler. This is the product we're using. This is USC's icing. This is a finishing polyester finishing putty works very well in these situations so i'm just going to put a little bit on here i'm not going to need a lot at all i am not going to mix this up quite yet i'm going to put my hardener and this mixes up basically two percent that's a little bit too much right there but it'll be okay we're going to mix this up over at the repair before i mix this up and fill that area I want to clean the surface. So for that, I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol. Now we're going to mix up our filler. For this, we're just going to fold, we're just going to fold this hardener into our filler. We don't, want to, we don't want to stir it. We'll introduce air that way, and that'll create pinholes and air pockets that could create a problem in your repair. So you want to make sure you get your Bondo sprayer clean. Okay, now this is ready. I'm gonna get a little bit on my spreader here. Now I know it's gonna go from here to about here. Here's the low area, but we wanna be about one inch to two inch outside of that. I'm pressing it in, but not, not really hard. The first pass will press in. And I wanna make it smooth towards the outside of the 
of the spread. And we're gonna come back this way just a little bit. I want to make it as smooth as I possibly can, but we are going to sand most of this off, so that's okay. Okay, I feel good about that right there. We'll leave that, let it cure. It'll take about 15 minutes to cure, 15 to 20 minutes to cure. It is a little bit warmer today, so it probably won't take quite as long. And then we'll go ahead and block this with 180 to get it straight. Okay, so our finishing putty is dry. We're going to use some 180 grit sandpaper on the hook and loop flexible block. I put some guide coat on here so we can see what's going on. Okay, now we'll take off the 180, put on some 320. We're just gonna refine the scratches. We're starting to break through the body filler. So we just wanna smooth this out a little bit and then we're gonna put some primer over it. So we're just removing some of these 180 grit scratches. Refining those a little bit. Yes, and that feels perfect now. Let's blow this off, clean it off, and then we'll go ahead and mix up some primer. Using today, it's the U-Pole 2253, and we're gonna use some standard hardener with it. We're gonna mix, this mixes up four to one. This is a 2K urethane primer, high build primer. Okay, so we got our primer. There's no use, there's no need in taping this off because we're gonna sand the rest of this hood as anyway. I'm gonna keep my pressure low. I'm gonna open my volume three turns out from closed. In my fan pattern, I'll have wide open. And then um, the air pressure I'm gonna keep about probably 15 to 20 PSI. Going on nice and smooth. Not a lot of overspray. This spray gun uses very little PFM, so it does not need a lot of air pressure to function properly. So it doesn't produce a lot of overspray. Okay, we'll let that flash off for just a few minutes and then we'll put another coat on. Now it's time to prepare the rest of this hood. Now this hood was pre-primed when we purchased it. From the, this is an aftermarket hood. I believe this was purchased from Summit, but it's pre-primed and it's got some really tough texture primer on it. So we need to smooth this out in order to get it ready for paint. Now how I'm gonna go about that is I'm gonna use my orbital sander with some 320 grit sandpaper. I'm not using an interface pad because I really want it to cut and smooth this hood out. Now, a lot of aftermarket parts come with primer <clears throat> that is not as tough as this. It's not as difficult. It's not as textured as this. So you may be able to do that with 600. This particular hood has some heavy duty primer on it that's really textured. We're gonna smooth it out with the 320. Now you can do this all by hand if you choose. But let's get this sanded, we'll move on to the next step. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. If you look closely here, and I think this will show up on camera, you can see that texture in this primer. Okay, here's where we sanded this out, and this is what we want. That's what we're looking for to apply our new base, a smooth finish. Here I'll go ahead and sand the rest of the hood with the 320 grit sandpaper, smooth out that primer, and then we'll run over it with 600 before we apply our sealer and our base coat. So another thing I wanna talk a little bit about is these contours that are in this hood. When you're sanding this with an orbital sander and you're trying to go around these contours, this is gonna flatten out spots on these contours and that can show up in your paint and your clear coat as a flat spot around a rolled edge we don't want that 
In order to sand that properly so you don't have any of those flat areas, we're going to use a gray scotch Brite with a piece of 320 grit sandpaper. And you can do this with 600 if you're doing it on your final prep. And you just want to hold it on the edge like this and sand that evenly so you don't have any of those flat spots. Just a little tip. And if you've painted a lot of vehicles, you'll run across this where you can flatten out those rolled edges and it looks like a poor job. We also need to use this in this area where we can't fit our uh, orbital sander. We might have a smaller sander that we could fit in here, but we're just going to hand sand this with 320. After sanding over this hood with some 600 grit sandpaper and masking it off, this hood is ready for some sealer and paint. And here's the finished product. And listen, if you want to learn more about paint and body repair, how to repair your vehicle or your restoration project, check out one of these videos now. I appreciate each and every one of you watching, and we'll see you next time on Garage Noise.